This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Netflix. All right, so we got our variable going and getting the data. Now we kind of have to get it logged somewhere. But first, let's, let's get rid of any, we don't want to log anything anytime it's zero. So let's say if clip does not equal zero, and zero being the string variable of it, then do this. So we're going to put whatever our logging stuff is, and end if there. The other thing is we kind of don't want to log the same thing over and over. So if they only have the same clipboard text in the same, you know, they don't copy anything in 100 milliseconds, which we're going to just fill up logs that way. We're going to make it so that we have a, an old clip to compare to. So let's make an old clip variable and instantiate, instantiate it with a nothing and say if clip does not equal to old clip. So we're saying that it's not zero and it's not the same as it was before. Then, and we're going to end it correctly. And we're going to say do this. And then we have to make old clip equal to new clip. Cool. So that's all of our code right now, and but we have we've we've solved the problem of one, it does it forever, and two, we're not doing the message box anymore. So now we have to log it somewhere. All right, so let's go back to our help file. Let's go under our file management. Oh, look at that! File write log. Now, file write log is um, is perfect for our, our uses because it does a timestamp key logging, right? Timestamp for every time you write to the file. So let's say, hey, we're going to do file write log. Now we got to say where we want to write it to. Let's just do um, this awesome global variable called user profile dir, and you can find all that on, on the help on Autoit. What user profile doer is a is a global variable saying user profile or the whoever's running it their profile location, and we're going to say and because that's how you concatenate two strings together in Autoit. Then put clip dot log. So that's the location of the log, and we got to say what the log message is going to be, and it's going to be clip, and that's it. All right, so we have our clipboard keylogger. I think we have all the things that we talked about done. We have our, it's going to go forever. It's not going to eat up CPU usage, which is a kind of an added feature. Um, it's not going to pop up a message box, and we're logging it somewhere. So let's go ahead and save it. Tools, go. Oh no, forgot something. Let's try logging it again. Go. Undefined function. Oh. So the reason why it's an undefined function is we go back over here, help, it says we have to include the file.au3. All right, let's do that real quick. Include file.au3. So these are user-defined functions. Again, we're going back to, hey, they did all this for us. Let's get rid of our debugging message box. Oops. Hit go. Okay, it seems to be working. Let's open up our user directory with percent user profile percent. There's a clip.log. Looks like there's something in there already because I probably forgot to delete it. Copy. See if anything new goes in there. Looks like it's running. So try copying it again, see if, oh, there it is. So we now have copied that. So let's see if our key, now it's running. 
Let's see if our clipboard log key logger actually gets the password for this guy logging in. So he copies the password, he goes, he signs back in, hack five user, demo user, and he pastes his password in. Oops, let's try copying it again because it didn't work. Copy, paste. Now, the thing that um, like LastPass, KeyPass, and all these password managers do is they, they clear the key clipboard quickly because they don't want anyone to pull down the, you know, accidentally paste their password somewhere. But we're logging it at such a fast rate that, yes, we're um, not pulling up CPU usage, but we're also doing it fast enough that even if they copy it in one in a hundredth of a millisecond or 100 milliseconds, we're going to get it. All right, he logs in successfully. Let's look if we got our password. Clip log and bada bing bada boom, we have our password. That's it, we've made our clipboard keylogger. Now let's make it one step more useful because they're not gonna run this thing in, you know, inside of site with everything compiled. All we do is tools, compile, say, hey, our target architecture Let's name him Clippy.exe, and let's name him Clippy64.exe, because it can compile in both uh, 32 and 64-bit. We're going to say it is a GUI version. Compile both copies. We're going to compress it as high as we can. Compile script. See how it goes. And in a few seconds, in the my documents, we should have Clippy64 and Clippy.exe. And those are 352 kilobytes and 846 kilobytes, or 848 kilobytes. That's it. We've created a binary that logs keyboard or clipboard uh, entries. That's it. It's that simple. In all of 20 lines of code because of all the extra stuff. So. Let's remove all that and see how it looks. In 13 lines of code, we've now done a clipboard keylogger. That's it guys, 12, 12 lines of code. Thanks for watching um, and throwing it to whoever's next. See ya. With Netflix, the world's largest subscription streaming service, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies to your Microsoft Xbox 360, the Sony PS3 console, the Nintendo Wii console, and your computer for one low monthly price. No late fees, no due dates, and for a limited time, Hack5 viewers can get a free 30-day trial membership at netflix.com slash hack5. Sign up now and be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you. There are plenty of cloud services available now, but not many of them actually hook all of your services up so you have access to many of them through the same window. Uh, sounds pretty cool. And Gladinet Cloud Desktop is an emerging software application that does something kind of like that. And it's available in 32 and 64-bit versions, and it only works on Windows machines. Yeah, I know, that's a bit of a downfall. It seems to be built for a target audience of companies and business professionals, but I figure I would check it out. And it has the starter edition that's free, but all of the other ones come with like a 30-day trial, then you have to pay somewhere near 50 bucks a year or something like that. And by the way, I did find out that you can click it by now, buy it now, and there's this referral program where they give you 10 bucks for each friend that signs up, so that might be kind of handy for that $50 per year thing. And they also have a cloud server starting at $5 per month, but I'm just going to stick with checking out the cloud desktop application. So the first thing you wanna do is download the version of your choice and go through all the on-screen setup, of course. With that cloud storage desktop, you can access all of your cloud storage on a number of different sites. So I have cloud services set up on box.net, Amazon S3, there's Rackspace. You can even use your own FTP server and connect to that as well. This seems to be really handy for anybody that has Amazon S3 because they have several options for all the applications available. Although I did notice that there were a lot of downfalls too. There's a lot of services that aren't available. Dropbox, SpiderOak, and Google Docs. 
I use two-factor authentication and it won't work with this program, so I'll still have to go to the browser and log on normally. Kind of stinks. So when you mount your online storage with another company, you do have to enter in your username and password, which are stored locally. They say on their site that the security is in memory only, SSL secured, and it's AES 256-bit encrypted, which it should be. You can also have your cloud folder sync to all of your computers if you really want to, but I prefer not to. After this super simple setup, you now have access to all of your online storage. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you ever want to mount an extra directory or any kind of new program that you're using, you can open this up just out of your start menu, go to mount virtual directory, and choose the new service that you want to use. Like I said before, there's a ton of Amazon S3 versions that you can use, and they also have things like box.net, which I love. They were actually giving away like 50 gigs for free over December. It was pretty awesome. And here's Google Docs. See, it says, hey, we use Google Docs, but no two-factor authentication. Got to fix that so I can actually use it to all of its advantages. That'll be awesome. Now that you have everything set up on here, you should be able to access everything just through Windows Explorer. There's no need to log on to your internet browser or open another program. All you need is some kind of cloud storage somewhere, and Gladinet mounts it as a virtual drive for all of your syncing needs. So it looks really cool, right? So all you have to do is go to Open Drive, or from your computer, it'll be my Gladinet drive. And it should have box.net, Windows Live SkyDrive, Amazon S3, everything listed right there for you. So I can click in here, go to my Hack 5 documents, and they should all be listed there if I had any uploaded at the moment. And I can also browse to my box.net and go through all of my pictures that I have uploaded, whatever I have. So I should be eas easily be able to go to, let's see. All right, yeah, so I'm able to go into all my saved iPhone pictures and everything, and I can just click on that, open it, and save it to my computer or whatever I need to do. It's pretty nice. So it looks really cool. I just wish it had more advanced versions and it didn't cost so much because I'm kind of a penny pincher. So all in all, Gladinet looks really cool. It's super easy. I like it, but they do have some limits to my needs. They need to join forces with some of the other companies, like my favorite, Spider Oak, and add two-factor authentication for your Google Documents. But what do you guys think? I want to know how you feel about it. You can always email us, or you can comment, and we'll be sure to check out those. And coming up soon, we'll be answering your viewer questions. But first, let's take a break. Check out Jason with the nibble. AJ sends us this handy nibble in episode 922. You use links and grep to display your public IP address in one simple command. Totally awesome, unless you don't have links or you can't install it. Wgit is a much better solution as it is more lightweight and installs virtually everywhere, even if in BusyBox. Using Wgit and what at the Galen pointed out on Twitter, the following is a simple way to output your public IP address and nothing else. The command is Wgit dash Q dash capital O www.whatismyip.org and and echo. The dash Q is quiet, that way you don't see the progress bar and the other stuff you get from wgit. Dash capital O is to output to SDIO and and echo simply echoes to a new line to make it look pretty. So there you have it, how to output your IP address, public IP address, with a really simple command you can do virtually anywhere. If you have a tip just like this, send it over to hack5.org nibble.